well. Time now is 8.45 and turning to our Family First story this Monday morning, sponsored by Carter Mario. We're learning more about a potentially damaging illness that, while is uncommon, can have deadly consequences. Erica Arias spoke with the experts on what parents should be on the lookout for. And Family First today, I'm taking a closer look at a virus that we've talked about recently that can be deadly. It's called human parechovirus. A Connecticut mom who recently lost her newborn baby to the virus shared her story with us, and it is heartbreaking. It has a lot of parents worried, so I wanted to get you more information about this potentially deadly virus. It breaks my heart. Because <laughs> you should be here. We didn't know our time was going to be so short. Hamden mom Catherine Delancey shared her story with us after losing her son Ronan earlier this month to human parechovirus. Ronan was just 34 days old. My heart goes out to that family. It's very, very sad. Um, but I think it's, you know, unfortunately, it's an outlier in the types of infections and presentations that children who are infected with this virus have. Dr. Ian Michelo from Connecticut Children says while most of us have never heard of parechovirus until recently, it's very similar to other viruses and actually much more common than we realize. It's a very common type of virus. Uh, it affects young children mostly, but it can affect adults. <clears throat> the younger you are, the more likely it is that it can cause severe disease. But it is a common uh, intestinal type of virus. It can also cause respiratory infections. It often goes unnoticed and unidentified because the symptoms are usually so mild. Dr. Michelow says it's the rare minority that it makes a child seriously ill. And unfortunately, those rare cases tend to be in those who are very young, under three to six months old. And in those cases, it can cause very severe disease. In young babies, what sort of stands out about this virus is because it can cause infection around the of the brain and the, and the membranes around the brain called meningitis and encephalitis, it makes babies appear very sick. So if you know your baby's sick, take them to the doctor to figure out what's wrong, because if it's not parechovirus, it's another virus. Here's what to look out for fever, rash, headaches, and because it can cause infections of the brain, children often become very irritable. So beware if baby is especially fussy and not eating. Unfortunately, there's no specific therapy apart from supportive care, keeping your babies hydrated, keeping them comfortable, uh, and with the advice of a physician, maybe giving them something to control the fever and maybe some pain. But apart from that, it's really supportive care and recognizing that there's something there could be a little bit more serious going on than just a common cold. Parechovirus may present like many other common viruses. That's why it's important to monitor and know your baby. If they see a doctor and the symptoms don't improve after a few days, don't be afraid to bring them back. Parechovirus testing isn't common or easily done at any doctor's office. If a child is severely ill, they may need a spinal tap after first ruling out other more common viruses. Dr. Michelow says the best thing you can do to prevent parechovirus is what you would do to prevent any other virus. Hand sanitizers, hand washing, social distancing, and also making sure that people who are sick are not coming in close contact with young babies. If you'd like to see more of Dr. Michelow's interview or hear more from Catherine Delancey, you can find it all on our website. Just head over to fox61.com. I'm Erica Arias, Fox 61 News.